Happy Minion presents Neely Salem. <laughs> Usually we have Naomi Solomon here and she introduces me, but I'll just introduce myself tonight. <laughs> okay, so uh, we always begin with thanks. Uh, first of all, thank you, Rebona Sha'ilam. Always, always to begin with prayer. Rebona Sha'ilam, please just, we came out tonight. We so badly want to be prepared for young people who are practically and spiritually Hashem. Please just grant us that. Please, Hashem, give me the take my ego away so that I can be a channel for all these holy souls and thank you Hashem so much for our health and being here and the fact that we even have Yom Kippur it's so awesome okay thank you to the happy minion who puts this on thank you to we have a bunch of sponsors these I, I invite everybody always to sponsor if you want and um, there's also a really fun sponsorship idea which is where you buy a bottle and we put your name on it or for whoever you want to dedicate to like Rufu Shlema or Aliyat Neshama so if you'll notice back there, Rivka was a sponsor one time, and so on the bottle is who we want to wish in Aliyat Neshama to. So it's just a special way to get involved. Okay, tonight we want to thank Lisa Mechanic in honor of her father, Jerry Mechanic. It's Yosef Ben Binyamin. His, his uh, yard site is on Yom Kippur, so we wish him an Aliyat Neshama, mm -hmm. as well as her grandfather, Wolf Ben Mendel. It was his yard site this week, and her precious Ima, Doris Mechanic. Lisa, thank you for everything you do in this world. I don't know where Jerusalem would be without you. Um, this year is also in honor of the 13th yard site, also in Yom Kippur, of Malcolm Mayor Abraham ben Abraham. Also a member of our community, his father just passed away, so for Yitzchak ben Rachel Shadam and Aliyat Neshama, and uh, Elihu for your friend Steve Schumann as well. Um, also, Bracha Schuenauer, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Thank you so much for sponsoring tonight. It's in your merit that we all get to prepare. Um, and she blessed us that we should spread the light of Torah. Um, we also want to thank Barack Raviv for always sponsoring and Lee Neckemeyer, who is maternal grandpa, Philip Gilbert at 96. It was his best friend. He was a truly amazing man and so it's also in honor of him. And also in honor of the Rafuah Shlema of anybody who needs a Rafuah Shlema, including Shoshana Bar Hanachaya and Miriam Bat Ilana. Um, and now, we always start with the shofar blow because it's that time of the year. And what I invite you to do is that while I'm blowing <coughs> shofar, you close your eyes and um, bring your intention in for tonight. So it could be for you that your heart opens, it could be an intention for you that there's somebody you need to forgive that it seems <laughs> impossible, you could dive in on that. You could send the energy that we're gonna bring down tonight to anybody, your grandma, your grandpa, <laughs> your baby, just, you know, this is time to set an intention, okay? All right, here we go. So I will appreciate it if you all close your eyes because then I know you're not looking at my face getting red <laughs> and rather setting your intentions. Yeah, I'm already dripping sweat. Thank you, God. <laughs> My dad's like, do you need a jacket? I was like, Dad. <laughs> Seriously. All right, here we go. here and my sister and my nephew and his friend who it's his first Torah year ever but also in the audience because this is not to be missed my friend Charlene is sitting here we've seen each other once since eighth grade so it's been about 20 years so this is precious for me and I have students from Israel here that I taught them five years ago in seminary or four years ago we can't figure it out and a student from 11 years ago when I used to teach at Sinai. So this, and also everybody and my precious friends and nobody is neglected, but those are, those are super special shout outs. So I have two questions. We have an Anna and a Vani, okay? So one of them is gonna be a Vanna White, but I didn't figure out who. So should it be Anna who could be Vanna, or should it be Vani who could be Vanna? Because, <laughs> or you can both turn me down, and if anyone is as ADD as I am, you have the opportunity to take notes on a board tonight to help keep people in mind. Would that excite anyone to have that privilege? <laughs> you wanna do it? All right, all right, so here's your chair, and here's your pens. Yeah, go on, you'll be, everyone clap for Vanna White! You are going to do such a good job. Don't worry on spelling, okay? All right, and we're going to, Rip Shlomo Karlibach always said that the way to open our hearts is through music and songs, so Chloe and I are going to just intro us. We're just going to open with a little ditty. Chloe, you want to share? Sure. 
Okay, so, and for the sake of Kalisha, we just ask that you sing along so that everybody is comfortable. Before we start, everybody just inhale, deep inhale. receive this beautiful light, this beautiful Torah that Neely is going to share and channel for us so beautifully. Yay. Wow. Yay. All right, that's it. We could go home now. Yeah. <laughs> that's now all I begin. needed. That's all. Just come over, do that every now day till Yom Kippur. Now, now we begin. Right, amazing. Thank you so yeah, much, Chloe. What a, what a sure. My favorite thing about Chloe is that she owns her light. And by doing so, she gives other people permission to shine their light too. So, L'chaim Glow. Yeah. All right, so there's a book, and it has the best title in the world. It's called, This is Real, and You Are Completely Unprepared. <laughs> That's why my dad's in the front row. Ha 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 ha
So this is real, because in about two days, in about 48 hours, God will be determining our fate for the entire year. How much money you make, or how little you make, God forbid. If you're gonna feel anxiety and stress, oh yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah in two days. <laughs> we need a soundtrack, like, dun, 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 dun. dun. <laughs> okay, so it's true. You know, you know, he's a good laugh track, but he doesn't know how to turn off his new Apple Watch yet. <laughs> he just got it yesterday. Forgive him. <laughs> dad, outside, not inside. <laughs> dad, dad, dad. Dad! <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> okay, cool. So what we're going to do tonight, because our fate is being determined, and we don't, look, every, listen, this is what I do. I teach Torah, and every year I arrive at this week, and I, and I don't feel prepared, and I don't remember what happens in shul, and I don't know what they read, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do in the next 48 hours, so we're going to tonight do a practical and spiritual review of everything on Kippur. Does that sound wonderful? Yes. Oh, yes. Great. Can I have some enthusiasm? Thank you. Yeah. Now, this Torah class is actually called Secrets of the Parsha. We're not going to do the Parsha at all tonight. But please, God, after Sukkot, we'll get back in the jam. But just so you know, this week, this Shabbat will be Parshat Ha'azinu. It's the second to last Parsha, and it's a song, which is cool. So anyways, there's that. And I realized a lot of my friends weren't so into shul, right? And I'm standing there blubbering like, Oh, 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 you know, I'm like, what a girl behind me, like, I kept getting all these, like, pats on my back, you know, <laughs> it's gonna be okay, honey, you know, and the girl behind me is like, wow, Neely, that was heavy, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, you know who you are, she's like, that was really heavy, I was like, really, because, like, I was just begging for my life, I didn't feel that that was heavy, <laughs> like, really, but really, but really, you know, there's a lot on the line right now, and I looked around, and I saw a lot of people just kind of looked bored, and happy minute we come here and everyone's invited for the high holidays whether you could pay whether you can't pay everyone is welcome kids mass no mass you feel free this is a great place to feel free to be yourself um, but I realized what I think the issue is right and a lot of sisters and brothers they like kind of like sneak out after the first bracha or they're like kind of like you know reading their book in the corner and I'm like what is it why is it right like I'm not different why am I blubbering did you write blubbering <laughs> You're doing great. I really appreciate this. This is actually the funniest guy in town. I should sit down and let him speak. Blubbering. So, blubbering. So, and I realized something very crucial, that I think that the difference between people who are still interested in Judaism, between those that are kind of faltering and those that are over it, is one line. And I would like you to repeat this, okay? So we're going to shout this out loud, just like a Tony Robbins thing, okay? <laughs> You're so important. You're so, You're so important. Let's do that together. You're, You're so, so important. important. So now just do me a favor, look at the person next to you and let them know you are so important. So important. And this gets weirder. I want you to now say, I am so important. Because if you don't know, if you don't know that you are so important, you might not really care to show up for davening. You won't, it's long. It's like 500 freaking pages. What other religion makes you go through a book that's 500 pages in one morning, right? <laughs> but you know why it's important? Because you're important and only, 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 only when we realize how crucial we are to the survival and the thriving of the entire universe will we truly show up. So the fact that y'all are here is great because that means already we know we're a little important. But this is the first and I think the most important thing about Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. Because only when you know that you're so important can you know how to begin doing your spiritual work. So if you didn't know that, let's just try this one more time. I'm so important! I'm so important! Amazing. And I'll tell you something really, really special, all right? This week I was talking to a girlfriend who's sitting here. Oh my God, I don't think Anna or Naomi or Shoshani Marakibu helped set everything up. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. I forgot to thank you at the beginning. Um, but I was talking to a girlfriend here, and we were talking about mitzvahs, and I said, you want to know the craziest thing? You want to know how important you are, how important your mitzvahs are? Because it sounds like so Haredi, like, your mitzvahs are so important, you got to do mitzvahs. And I'm like, oh my God, stop. Like, that was so sixth grade, right? Don't, don't tell me my mitzvahs are so important. Like, you know, there's a football game on. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
Seriously, like, why are you going to tell me my mitzvahs are important? So Rav Shlomo Karlibach says, and thank you, Anna, for reminding me of this Torah, that if you give a thirsty person a glass of water, do you know what God considers that equivalent to? Who, who said that? Do you remember that? Yeah. It's the equivalent of dancing for 70 years. Oh, wow. The merit that you get for giving one thirsty person one glass of water in your lifetime is the equivalent of you would have the joy, you'd be so proud of yourself, you would have the energy to dance for 70 years. That's one water, one time. And here's the craziest thing. So then I'm on my way home from shul after Anna and I just shared this Torah, and there is you know, a person without a house on the floor, and I happen to have a bottle of bubbly water with me. Uh -huh. And I was so excited just to leave it next to her. I was like, God, what a wink. Thank you so much. So we're really, really important, okay? That's, that's, that's how we're gonna start. Now, what we're gonna do tonight, like I said, practical and spiritual. I wanna go back, just the basics. What the heck does Yom Kippur even mean? Does anyone know the root of the word Kippur? Yom means what? Day. Day. Good. Oh, good. I like the yelling. What does it mean? Day. day. What does yom mean? Yom. Day. day. You're the best <laughs> thing yep. Woo! That's what's up. Akiva, what does yom mean? Day. Yeah, Akiva! That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, Kippur actually comes... Does anyone know what the word Kippur comes from? Atonement. It does mean atonement. That's the fancy word. At one mint, if you want to be hippie. <laughs> Uh, close, we're gonna get there. Whoever said that, I love you. Yay, welcome. Okay, Kippur comes from the word kapara, you know, like kapara, like oh, yeah. The chicken over the head. Oh, the chicken over the head, we're gonna get there. But really, it comes from the word kaporet. Kaporet was the cover over the holy ark. And I wanna say why this word is important. Kippur really means cover. Has anyone here seen Rent? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you know that song, I'll cover you? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'll cover you. Right, exactly. So what is a cover? A cover means God is saying to us, I'll cover you. I got your back. Yom Kippur is a kaporet. It's a covering. God's like, oh man, you messed up all year long. You messed up all year long. I got you. You know, the second most important thing we have to know, besides we're so important, is that God loves us and wants the best for us. And God says, one day a year, one day a year, act like an angel and I'll cover you. Yom Kippur, the day that God puts a, a covering over us. I got you. Work with me on my team. Don't eat so much. Show up in shul, wear a little white, and I got you. I'll cover for you. God has your back. This is very hard, you know, like I said, I've been in this religious lifestyle for about 14 years and I'm a little obsessive, right? Where's my yeah, sister? Seven days. Seven days? Yeah, that's going to be tied into the Torah. We have two days and seven's going to be tied in real quick. So that was really smart. <laughs> okay, bye! <laughs> that's what's up. So first of all, is that not a beautiful Torah? Did you guys ever think of yeah. that? No, it's beautiful. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, what's up? I always thought it. But really loud for the internet I, people. I always thought it, it, it was kind of counterintuitive. Like, kapar, like you should cover our sins. Why should we cover them? Shouldn't we mm. like get rid of them mm. and rip them off mm. and, and be open mm. and let, allow them to leave, mm -hmm. right? Is it, is it still the, counterintuitive? The seems counter, counterintuitive? Is right? it still counterintuitive when you hear this interpretation that I'll cover for you? Like I got your back. Like yeah, good yeah, siblings. Yeah, I, I like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'll get the chocolate chip cookie out of the fridge. I'll get the Oreos. Don't tell mom and dad. Yeah, and the sister is like, yeah, I'll cover for you, but don't tell them about the jean skirt I went out in. Okay, I hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll cover for you. So God is actually very much on our team. And we talk about this a lot because life is a setup. You know, David Sachs, the, one of the leaders of the Happy Minion, says, if the Garden of Eden was so perfect, why was there a snake in there? <laughs> right? Our lives are a setup. It's a setup. We're destined to mess up. It's okay. But then, just one day a year, we work with God and he says, I'll cover for you. Who's <coughs> that? No. God bless, God bless you. you. Thank Lord you. bless you and keep you. May he sign his countenance upon you. Oh, I like Give you peace. Uh, okay. So now, okay. So now, guys, what's the, what's, oh, good. Oh, oh. So what is, what's the first thing we learned? I am so important. important. I'm so important. And then we learned that Yom Kippur means? Covered. Cover, cover, it. I'll cover for you. I'll, I got you. You're my homie. I actually want the best for you. But then the question is, wait, why do we even celebrate Yom Kippur? What's the history? Where did it start? 
Isn't this fascinating? We show up every year in shul. Why? What the heck is Yom Kippur? What is Yom Kippur? What? <laughs> Guys, isn't this funny? Like every year I forget. Do you also forget every year? Yom Kippur. Oh, what is it? It's in the Torah. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's in the Torah, but it's actually very vague in the Torah. It talks about the 10th of the month more than saying Yom Kippur because it's a very, it's a hidden thing. What happened? For what? There we go. See, what? most of us forget. There is this thing. You know that Yom Kippur is all about the golden calf? Mm -hmm. Did you guys know that? Yeah. I know. I grew up my whole life. I didn't know that. Like, what are you talking about the golden calf? So, you, did you know that? Is that no. crazy? Yom Kippur is about the golden calf. God gave us the Torah. I'm going to put these down. God gave us the Torah. And 40 days later, Moshe goes, he's like, you know, Moshe's back up on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain, right? And the people were expecting, all it's not the people, it's us. We're expecting Moshe to come back down. We count down the days. We're so excited. Except for we got oh. the timing wrong by about half a day. And in half a day, we were so tripped out that we're like, oh my God, Moshe's not here. I need an idol. Somebody get me an idol. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And you know what the lesson is, by the way? I wrote it down because I, I've thought about the golden calf a lot. In fact, there was this one time in Purim in Israel where this guy, and this was like the most heretical costume I've ever seen, which is why it made it the best costume for Purim. He put on a golden cow outfit and walked through the streets of Jerusalem. Oh my God. And first I was like, that's just, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> because cause the concept of Purim is really to open your heart to, to that which is beyond. But I thought, you know, the golden calf, the problem was we weren't patient. We let fear take over, which is really crucial for our lives today. You know, what is the golden calf of our day? What are we bowing down to? Everyone can answer that on their own so I don't get political. Welcome. <laughs> um, also, you know, we made an assumption and we didn't have the, we didn't, we didn't think maybe there's a misunderstanding. And Yom Kippur is really about when we what? Essentially, we make assumptions about other people. We have misunderstandings and then all of a sudden they're bad and I'm right and they should apologize. No, and it's just me. <laughs> Everyone else thinks they're wrong and I think I'm right. <laughs> what is that with the silence? <laughs> right? No, isn't that what happens? We make, we, have, we make an assumption. Oh, well, they must have done this because that. And we start, golden calf. We're like, where's Moshe? Why isn't he back yet? He must have abandoned us. No, he just needed a little bit more time. Okay, so golden calf, what happens is that and he comes down initially, sees them making the golden calf, smashes the tablets, which by the way was really, really crazy. Daniela, you want to know why? Because what were they made out of? Gold. Sapphire. 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 These were precious blue diamond sapphire, magnificent, carved with the hand of God. And Moshe smashes them. And later if we stay, we could talk about why it's unbelievable. You're doing great. Thank you. Really yeah, it's really helpful, right, to hear it and process it. So what happens is Moshe goes back up to, to Mount Sinai, and when he comes back down with the second tablets, that they're for, is that second tablets? I may have gotten Israel. He comes back down, and God has forgiven them. And that day that Moshe comes back down is? There you go. You learned something new. Isn't that amazing? Who, who thought? And you want to know what's amazing about this? What did they do with those broken tablets? Did they throw them in the recycling bin? <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> you want to know what? You want to know where they went? They're back together again. Close. They're in the ark. You know why that's weird? Because the ark is called the Kodesh Kedoshim, the Holy of Holies. And you know what my teacher Morale Golem says? May she live and be blessed. You know what's precious to God? Not just your A pluses, and the hundred dollars you made that hour and your good hair day, but your broken pieces and your brokenness. God puts all of our broken pieces into the Kodesh Kedoshim. Isn't that like mind blowing? Isn't that amazing? So, I've tried it. so that's like, wow. So at that point we get forgiven, but it's not to say like, I was perfect the whole time. It's I messed up and I'm sorry. And because of that mess up, I came closer to you, God. There's this amazing analogy. Yes, I did a diagram. Oh, nearly last year. Um, I really, sometimes I think my former self. Um, you guys ever do that? It's really nice. You should try. Like if you set something up, you made your bed and you come home, you're like, oh my God, thank you, Shoshani, this morning. That was such a good room. 
right? You know what I'm saying? It's so good to set yourself up for success. So the idea of a sin is that it's actually this thing that like cuts off a cord to God. You see, like if, if you, if this is my relationship with God, then I just cut it when I mess up the sin. But the beautiful thing is what happens when you have a rope and you tie it back together after it's severed? Stronger, Stronger and shorter. The connection grows. Oh. I'm closer to God. Oh. Okay. My broken places, my broken pieces, your mommy. Best surprise ever. Oh, I can't switch it. Oh. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> I know, isn't that amazing? Oh, thanks for coming. Did you think it was going to be over yet? No. Good. Okay. So anyways, the whole point is that the, the forgiveness of Yom Kippur is really a part of God's general perspective on us. Guys, raise your hand if you're a little broken. If you're what? A little broken. Oh. A little broken? Yeah, look around. All, oh, all of us are raising our hands. Yeah, we're all a little broken. You know what? That's not the messed up part with you. That's not the part of you where, Daniela, you think, oh my God, there must be something wrong with me. You know, I'm a therapist. So I get to catch myself a lot in my head. When I hear myself saying, oh my God, Neely, what's wrong with you? There must be something wrong with you. And this is not a line that plays in my head only. Raise your hand. <laughs> right, right. Physical or mental? <laughs> so, so yeah, so on Yom Kippur, we finally get forgiven for that, and that's the Ikar. Okay, so, I'm sorry, what does Yom Kippur mean? Kippur means? Kippur, the day of covering. Hashem's like, I got, let's say this, Hashem says, I got your back. I got your back. I got your back. Second thing we learned is that the history of Yom Kippur comes from? The golden calf. Guys, round of applause, look how much you learned already. No, oh, come on, isn't that exciting? It's like Yom Kippur's in two days and we didn't remember any of this. Okay, here's some other basics. Yom Kippur is known as the Super Shabbos. It's called Shabbat Shabbatonim, okay? So on Yom Kippur, you can wish people a successful fast, but you can also wish them, you can wish them. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm really not good at PC. <laughs> uh, you know how it goes. Uh, you can wish people a good Shabbos on Yom Kippur, okay? So good Shabbos, good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Oh, he's right on in it, okay? So Yom Kippur means to? To cover. cover. And Yom Kippur is the history is that we were forgiven from the? Golden calf. And it is also? Shabbos, Shabbos, Kodesh, Idi, Da, Da, Shabbos, Kodesh. Okay, cool. Now, who mentioned Purim before? You did. You did. No, one of the homies in the back. What's your name? Esther. Hi, homie. Oh, Esther. Esther mentioned Purim. <laughs> Don't worry, Esther, I come prepared. It even matches my outfit, thanks to the 99 cent store. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing, guys. We have to also look at the word. <laughs> we also have to look at the word Yom Kippur, because actually, some of us have learned this, and it blew our minds when we learned it, and some of us have never learned this, and you're going to blow your mind right now. Yom Kippur is not the holiest day of the year. Oh. <laughs> Why? Because Hashem's name's not mentioned? There's holiness in that. That's a great idea, and that's true. And this is a lot of concealment going on. Nice, yes? It gives us like more fun and festive. Yeah, very good, and I'll tell you why. You ready? Yeah? Wait, what's your name? I'm Yoni. Yoni! Yoni. Guys, let's try that again. Yoni! Yoni. 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 It's not personal. I make everyone do it. That's okay. What was the question? Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, why, why is it... Why, why do I, why am I, like, isn't it a little heretical that I'm saying that Yom Kippur is not the holiest day of the year? No. No, why? Good, why? <laughs> you agree with Leo who says because it's actually freaking fun? It's the only time when, like, there was the real concept of faith or Amuna because Hashem's name wasn't even mentioned. Oh, so you agree with Lorette. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. I'm going to tell you what Rush Lomo says. These are all great explanations, and I totally dig them. Oh, yes? Totally. Awesome. These are all amazing answers. Yes. I think it's to do with masks. You think it's to do with Corona? No. <laughs> <laughs> she said the masks. Isn't this amazing? 99 cents. 
covering yourself. Interesting, there is covering. We talked about, okay, I'll tell you how Reb Shlomo phrases it. You're never going to forget this as long as you live. You ready for this one? You know, so Yom Kippur, why am I comparing it in the first place? Because Yom Ke Purim, a day like Purim. Raise your hand if you knew that yet. Yeah, I did. Okay, now you ready to know why? Because Reb Shlomo says on Yom Kippur, you ask for forgiveness. But on Purim, you're so drunk on joy that you've already forgiven. Oh. Yeah, Leo is totally right. Go figure. Let me just say that again, because it's really, really powerful. Yom Kippur is a day like Purim, Yom Kepurim, because on Yom Kippur, I ask for forgiveness from others, from God, but on Purim, I'm so drunk with joy, whether it's alcohol or joy or, or air, or whatever you're drunk on, mm -hmm. right? Weed. <laughs> <laughs> that was my mom. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that you've already <laughs> forgiven. And that's a very, <laughs> you guys see the notes, it's really good. So <laughs> Not everybody can see it. That's fine, that's fine. So, so the invitation is if you want to make Yom Kippur the holiest for yourself and not wait till Purim, the idea is to try to forgive already. And I want to tell you something. Oh, by the way, I'll just give you a really quick rundown of why they're similar, right? On Yom Kippur and Purim, we also dress up. On Purim, we dress up in clothes. On Yom Kippur, we dress up in white. On Purim, we fast and then we feast. And on Yom Kippur, we fa feast and then we fast. Wow. Again. <laughs> and then we feast again. And I want to point something out very, very deep. If you look in your Yom Kippur, your Rosh Hashanah Machsor, you'll notice that every other paragraph of the Amidah starts with a certain word. Does anyone know what it is? We talked about it, yeah. Uvachen. Oh, if you now notice in your machsor, you're going to see every other word is uvachen, uvachen, uvachen. What does that even mean in English? How do you translate that? And thus. And thus. Yeah, that's, oh. yeah, and thus. Uvachen, uvachen, uvachen. It's like what that regular amidah, the regular main central prayer does not begin with uvachen, uvachen. So what's this uvachen? So the sages say, and I learned this from my friend Ezi, he should be blessed, that uvachen is taken straight from Megillat Esther. Wow. Because when Esther goes to the king and her life is on the line, it says, and I'm sorry I didn't prepare it, but it says, Uvechen. And so, and thus, Esther went to approach the king. And we're supposed to learn on Yom Kippur how to approach God the way that Esther did. Wow. With so much courage. Mm. With so much, you know, how are you going to ask forgiveness from that person that you just had the hardest time with this year without feeling like you're putting your life on the line? It's total ego death. It's total mm -hmm. ego death. And you have to go to the king as if your life is on the line, because it is. And we should all be written in the Book of Good Life till 120, but uvachen. Amen. Now when you see uvachen in your sidur, you're going to be like, that was Esther! Esther, you got your Torah for the night? Wow, I love that. Isn't that unbelievable? Oh, I, that yeah. one blew my mind also. Okay, now Ariella brought something really awesome up during uh, shul, and I want to just repeat it, because it's a David Sachs Torah, but it's really important, because I said we're going to do practical. So what do we learn so far? Yom Kippur is... Yom Kippur is a covering, covering right? Like day of covering. The day of covering. What's the history? Golden From calf. the golden calf. Yeah. From the sin of the golden calf. Right. And we said that Yom Kippur is also Sha Shabbos. Shabbos. And that Yom Kippur is like? Purim. Very good. Now, this is really important to know because right now, right, as we're approaching the king, Ariella mentioned that we're in what's, what David Sachs calls the days of wet cement. Mm. And this is a beautiful Torah, and I'm re-giving it over because it's worth it. Right now, if there was somebody paving the sidewalk and it was wet cement and you took a stick and you wrote your name in there, how easy would that be on a scale of 1 to 10? So easy. easy peasy. Now, it dries. I give you the same stick. No, can't do it. Can't David Sachs it. says, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> right? And here's another analogy that he gives, and this is unbelievable. Let's say you're an architect and you're designing a 27-story building. Okay? Y'all got this? Yeah. Hagigs, you with me? Now. Uh, no, I know. I just like, it's just, I, I feel close to her, so just calling out, you know. Okay. God forbid, if I ever embarrass anyone or I ever call on you to answer, please just turn me down, okay? I'm just doing it for shtick, but I don't want to embarrass anyone, okay? Especially not now. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> I go to everybody, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's 
Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> forgive you. Okay, so what is this? Now, now, if I decide that on the 27th floor, I look at my floor plan before the building is built, and there's windows here and the door is there, and I'm like, I don't think that'll do. The sunset happens there. Let's switch it. Let's put the doors over here and the windows over here. So all I have to do is take a pencil and erase it and redraw it. What happens once the building is built? You won't have to break it. It just makes it a lot harder. It just makes it a lot harder. And so that's the time we're in right now. We're in the time of wet cement. We're in the time with the eraser, right? These next two days are so precious. Our whole, like if we only, Hashem should bless us to understand what our thoughts and our kavanot, our intentions are and how big it affects us right now. Okay, so now what? Now what? What are we gonna do? We have 48 hours. Neely, you're making us nervous. 47. 47 hours. Oh, you're making me nervous. Oh, 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 oh my God. Hi. All right. First things first. 47 hour countdown. Oh my God. You're the best. We chose the right banner. Okay. So now what? Make those calls. Make the call. Raise your hand if you have someone that you didn't sort things out with yet. I have a call scheduled for 9 a.m. tomorrow with someone in Israel. We all have someone to work things out with. Make the call. Call the person you need to apologize to. Just do it. It will make you feel sick in your stomach. That's when you know you're really doing chuba. And I want to invite you into something else. And this comes from my sister, Danielle, who's just there. And I want to congratulate her because she just took 400 people to the beach for Tashlich. Wow. Yay. All dressed in white, okay? My sister is the master of writing personal cards. Maybe you can't call somebody, but here's what I did. I went to the 99 cent store <laughs> last night and I bought 26 cards for anyone Aww. who is willing to write someone a card. Maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your mom, wow. maybe it's your next door neighbor who you made really angry because you were playing Metallica, Charlene. <laughs> okay, so if anyone, they're beautiful, okay? I have here a great big thanks for all your help. You're the best, okay? So I have about seven of those. You could take and pass. If anyone is really, really, not just write yeah. Shenatova inside. He deserves it. Not, he does deserve it. You're not allowed to write Shenatova. These cards have to be written like Danielle writes them. That means front to back. All the words. Fill it up, okay? If you're game, you could choose that. You could choose hi there. There's one for girlfriends. I'm so glad we're friends. And there's love, family, memories, dreams. I'm gonna pass these around. If you will truly write this to somebody, the whole reason all of us are here tonight could be for one of these cards. Could be for one of you that's gonna call your brother or your mother or your next door neighbor and really, and really write something heartfelt. So Amen. if you're really gonna do it, you may take a card. There's 26 in honor of Hashem's name because we're bringing Hashem's presence into the world. Take and pass. If you're really going to write one, you could take it. If you don't get one at the back, I'm really sorry. Go to the 99 cent store. They're a dollar a card. And you can also get a mask. They're also a dollar. Okay, now I'll tell you what's very interesting, okay? So I have a best friend, a best friend in Israel, and we've been best friends for about 14 years. And this year we got into a fight, and we haven't spoken in a few months, okay? And I actually, we've been so distant that I forgot that I needed to call her. I have my list of quite a few people that I've had to call and work through things with. Like, I, I shed a nice few tears this last week. Um, and I forgot about this one girl. Now this one girl, I can't say her name because I didn't get permission from her yet. She has a very unique name, a very unique name. It's not a name most of you have ever heard. It's not even a Hebrew name. It's just a weird name. And every morning what I try to do is I, I get in my dad's car. <laughs> Thanks dad. <laughs> I get in my dad's car and early morning I go to the beach to Davin Shahari, okay? And so I'm on my way and this time I'm very intentional that I'm going there not just to do Shahari but to do Tshuva, okay? So I, you're not going to believe what happened, okay? So, well first I'll tell you two, two days in a row, okay? So day one, I'm getting out of the car with the specific intention to do Tshuva and I'm feeling really uncomfortable about it because there's people I just, I don't want to make these calls, I don't forgive them, I don't know what to do. Hashem, I need your help. And as I'm walking out to the beach, I take my flip-flops off, I start in the sand, and I see something in the sand. That's weird. I come to the beach every day for the last like month now. What's in the sand? And there's a card in the sand that says God is in charge. Oh, wow. wow. Sticking out of the sand, there's a card that says from Archangel Mikhail, and my teacher Leah, her husband was named Mikhail, and I feel very close to him. I hang out with him spiritually during services. It says from the Archangel Mikhail, God is in charge. I was like, I'm sorry, does that say 
what? And I looked down and I pulled it out and I kept it. Now, if that's not weird enough, the next day, I'm thinking about doing chuva. Welcome, guys. There's pizza, there's salad, help yourselves. I'm thinking about doing chuva, Eris. And I, I realize I have to call ABC person, but I forgot about D. D's the friend in Israel with the weird name who I haven't spoken to. And I get out of the car and I put my head up and there is a woman walking towards me with her name across her sweatshirt. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, can I take a picture of you? <laughs> I'm doing repentance <laughs> and the name of, the, I'm sorry, just never mind. Can I just have a picture? <laughs> So if my friend gives me permission, now that we've spoken a little bit, I'll show you a picture of me with a woman on Venice Beach with a, my best friend's name on it. That's crazy. <laughs> so it's time to make the calls, guys. I, I, I got the messages, but now I'm sending them to you. So I invite you right now, choose your person. Choose that one. You don't have so much time, right? You got 46 hours? Are we at 46 yet? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I invite everybody right now, choose who you're going to make the call or write the card to. Maybe you can't cover everybody. Maybe you can. Two days is a long time. I want everybody to please, I invite you, for the sake of peace in the world, because we're the nucleus, we're so important, remember? I invite everybody to just choose one person that you are 100% committing to. Oh my gosh, my head's chopped off on Facebook. I hope you guys <laughs> like my neck. <laughs> it's a nice neck. It's one of my better features. <laughs> it's from my mom. Especially with my necklace. Oh, so the necklace is something else. So I always dress according to the to what I'm teaching, actually. So I was going with the Yom Kippur theme here, honestly. But I actually wore gold for a reason, because one of the things I forgot to tell you is because we do Yom Kippur because we're forgiven for the golden calf, we actually do not wear gold. There's a custom not to wear gold on Yom Kippur. So I wore this gold, real gold, bling bling. <laughs> this is the most expensive thing I don't own. <laughs> It's gorgeous. It's my mom's, right? So we, I wore the gold just and a, a gold that I could easily take off to remind us all that if you do wear gold to Yom Kippur, okay, you're not going to get like smitten with lightning. But, you know, we try to wear our finest on Yom Kippur and then sometimes we forget and we end up wearing gold. We don't wear gold because we sin through gold, the golden calf, right? So on Yom Kippur, no gold. Okay, cool. So make the calls, okay? Everyone's committing to make a call. Yeah. Okay, second thing, it's time to take care of our debts, right? 48 hours, we're gonna get through it all. Is everyone okay? Everyone doing great? Little yes. Sure. Yeah, Yay. woo! Yeah. Woo, yeah. Okay, it's the last yeah. we did better, just kidding. <laughs> take care of your debts. You wanna know what happened? My parents are about to kill me when I'm about to admit what I'm about to admit. Uh -oh. oh my gosh, you wanna know what happened to me today on my way to Venice Beach? Because every day is a new, uh, that Venice Beach is giving me all my tikkunim. So I was thinking about this morning, do, as I was preparing the shiur, do I have any debts that I need to repay? I'm usually really, really machmir. And debts that you need to repay also means did you steal something? Okay, because it's easy to steal a pen from work. You really got to think about work. You got to think about your friends. That time you went out to uh, Nagila and you forgot to pay them back for the pizza. It's really time to think about the money. And I realized this morning, oh my God, shoot, I did steal something. I've already admitted it here, so I'll just admit it again. I, my parents have a handicap sign in the car, and one day I went to go hiking into Mescal, and I was like, oh, look, I don't have to pay, I have a handicap sign. <laughs> but it's not true, I have to pay, because I am, thank God, not handicapped, and I didn't, and that's like, and I had in my, I had in my schedule, I have to pay like $3 back to Los Angeles, right, I have to find a way to pay $3 back to Los Angeles, but you know what, I didn't do it, and we're in the Aser Yeme Chuva, and I got back to my car this morning, for my <laughs> 73 oh. dollar payment to Los Angeles. So I really, really, I was gonna try to not tell my parents, but then they showed up at this year. <laughs> this is not random. You know, every day at Venice Beach, a new story. When we don't pay back our debts, Hashem, Hashem makes them bigger, God forbid. So I really encourage us to all contemplate in these next 45 hours um, what debts you have to be back so that you also don't go from 3 to 73. Aren't these amazing stories from Venice Beach? <laughs> Guys, how are we doing? So what do you have to do right now? What are you going to do in the next two days? You're going to pay back. Call somebody and you're going to make sure to pay your, debt. pay your debts, whatever they are, okay? And you know what? I, I called somebody this morning. I had, I had at first it was very unsuccessful. We were screaming at each other for oh. like half hour. It was, it was heartbreaking. Wow. Yeah, it was horrible. And then we took a break and we called back and we were able to talk. 
And, 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 and she said to me, you don't even want to have this conversation. And I said, you're right. I don't want to have this conversation. I'm only having this conversation because it's Yom Kippur. She's like, I hate you and your God stuff. Why everything is God. You're only calling me because it's Yom Kippur. And I said, you know what? I am so gosh darn proud that I am calling you because it's Yom Kippur. And I am so grateful that it's Yom Kippur because I don't want to call you. But because it's Yom Kippur, I will. Oh, and so if anyone says to you, or if you say, oh, they just calling me because it's Yom Kippur, get off our high horses. Thank God we have a holiday that forces us to own up. And I said to her, yeah, I'm calling you because of Yom Kippur, and I'm really happy about that. It's a different perspective, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people think like, oh, well, you're just calling me because Yom Kippur. Yeah, so what? <laughs> so what? But I called, but I showed up. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So don't also, some people use that as an excuse not to call. I don't want to call now because if I call now, they're going to know I'm just calling for Yom Kippur. We'll call and admit it. I'm calling you because it's Yom Kippur. We're not them. We know we don't want to have this conversation. It's so vulnerable. It makes my skin crawl. Right? But it's okay. Thank God that God forces us once a year to own up and fix all the places we need to fix. Can we get claps for the Lord? Mm. <laughs> Okay, so now it's and it's and it's time for chuva. Okay, so how do you actually do chuva? So I'll tell you. All right, here's the thing. It says in the book of our heritage by Eliyahu Kitov, the more that a sin has become part of a person, the greater reward for the repentance. What does that mean? How do you do chuva? I'll ask you a question. What's the hardest thing for you? My teacher Leah says you want to know what to fix. What's the hardest for you? What's the hardest thing for you? That's a good one. What? What, what my hardest thing is? Uh huh. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what we learned about saying chuva in our past years. Is we learned to say the hard thing and do. And you, what's your fixing? What's your chuva? You don't have so much time. We got forty-four hours. I feel like this is that old show, Twenty-Four. It was so tense. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, yeah. Exactly. What were we gonna say? If, if you stole a credit, or no, not like a monetary credit, but if you stole credit or a hundred percent, hundred percent. All stealing, stealing dignity, stealing time. If you cut someone in line, you stole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it's really important. And it says also this interesting. If you don't know what to do chuva on, because again, we our time is short, so we're not going to cover everything we ever messed up with. But Book of Our Heritage says if there is a generation, if if there's a generation which it's known for a particular transgression, then the sensitive among them, that's us because we showed up tonight, should rectify that particular failing more than other failings. Okay? So also you could think gener generationally. What do you guys think our biggest transgression is for our generation? Too much time on the computer or on the... Screen addiction. Yeah. Screen addiction. What else would you guys say? I'd say also gossip. That's my, that's my uh, personal yeah. resolution this year. Irresponsibility. Judgment. Irresponsi no judgment. Irresponsibility. So take, if you're having a hard time knowing what your personal chuva is, another option to look at is, wait, what's happening bigadol? Because if I help fix it bigadol, it says that your one chuva could tip the scales for the entire generation. Wow. And it says that the essence of repentance is for man to realize which sin it is that has him or her in its grip. So he can extend all of his effort. You know why? Because where the Yetzir Hara slams you is exactly where your light shines the most. Wow. If you have a problem with gossip, that's because you have so much potential to use your mouth for good. If you have a problem with judgment, that's because you have so much potential to be accepting and loving. Beautiful. If you have a problem with stealing, because your greatest talent is honesty. Wherever the Yetzir Hara attacks you the most, that's where your greatest light lies. That's where the Yetzir Hara is attacking you in that place anyways. <coughs> you, do, does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. <coughs> All right, so what are we doing in the next 48 hours? We are... Calling. Calling. We are paying your debts, debts. and we are choosing. choosing one thing to do chuva for. And you want to know why? Yes, what's up? Only you can know. I mean, ideally, it's all of them, everybody. I've got both of those lists written down. So I want to go into this big. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. Like, I'm, I'm with you this year. Like there's people that I dearly like, uh, yeah. So what do I do? I'll tell you what I do. Every morning when I pray, I, I say I forgive them, even though I don't. I really don't. There's, there's, there's a person I really don't forgive. I really don't. 
But every morning I say, I forgive this person. Now it's not true, <laughs> but I'm trying to break the ice. I'm trying to break, I'm trying to break the shell around my heart. And, 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 and you ask God for help. You know, I'm sitting here on Rosh Hashanah having judgmental thoughts about people's outfits and I'm going, God, you gotta help me. 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 I know I'm not supposed to have that. That's God, you gotta help me. Oh my God, that person's so God, you gotta help me. Just call out for And there's a lot of things to do, but there, it's inevitable that we're gonna have pain that's so deep, perhaps, that in the past years I didn't have this problem. I was able. This year I have this problem. So it, Absolutely for ourselves, right? Rav David Sachs was quoting somebody also says, uh, unforgiveness is like boiling a pot of poison for someone else and drinking it yourself. Now, I still don't know how to work through that because this is the first year I'm experiencing it. Every year I was able to forgive. This year I'm, I'm sharing the boat. But if afterwards, let's stay and talk about that because it's very important. I think it's very relevant. I think a lot of people probably need to hear that. Is that true? Yeah. Yes. Can we be less quiet? Yeah. Can we do a yeah. laughing yeah. round? Can we make some noise? <laughs> hands up, put your hands up. Give me your heart. Give me, give me. Dad, you have a question? I have five minutes. It's I have five minutes for anyone that wants to leave at 930, for anyone wants to stay. Anyone, everyone is welcome to go. I will happy to talk to myself and the Facebook world. You're happy to stay as long as you want. Can, you, can I quickly uh, just ask, yeah. clarify that last thing? So you're saying, in terms of the tshuva process with somebody who you need to forgive, mm. it's a personal, it's personal work. It could be either. It could be either. I also have a girlfriend that I sent her a message. I, so what, here's what I do, okay? I, I share this in another shirim, so I want to keep it short. You got to come to all the shirim. I go through my contacts. I go through my contact list. And I just, uh, it takes like a thousand, I have like a thousand contacts in my iPhone, don't you? Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I make a page and the top says who I need to forgive and who I need to say sorry to. So there was one girl that I thought there was a little bit of beef with, but like, actually the truth is like, we just kind of, like, we love each other, but like, whatever. And I, and I said, hey, sister, like, we're clear, right? We're good, or is there anything we need to talk about? She's like, no, actually, there's something we need to talk about. Wow. And she was uncomfortable with something with me, and I'm so grateful because that means she cares enough to say. Wow. So I think when you do tell somebody that you haven't forgiven them, if it's somebody that can hold it, like, then I care. Chloe, what if I'm mad at you? Don't you want to know? I would love to. Right, I'm not. Thank God, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. But would you be happy? I was like, hey, how's it going? Because <laughs> what does that mean? It means I don't care enough to have you in my life. Yeah. If I approach you before Yom Kippur and I say, Chloe, I really want to talk. I'm holding on to a grudge about something. It might be hard and nauseating, but you'll know that I love you enough to keep you in my life. Yeah. Right? One of my students like, Neely, how do you want me to do that? I said this last week. How do you want that? That, that makes me want to barf. And I said, good, then you're doing real tshuva for the first time. Because <laughs> if you say to your, you know, I have no problem with Charlene. We were like such good friends in elementary school. She didn't do anything to me. You know, it's easy for me to Charlene if I did anything to hurt you in the last 30 years. I'm sorry. You know, she was great, great. No problem. That's not tshuva. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me, Neely. Yes. I think you said something that was very meaningful. Something? There is one, no, no, one specific thing in the last few minutes okay. is the fact that there is somebody yeah. that they, it's hard for you to forgive. Yeah. But you say to yourself, I have to forgive. And, uh, and even though it's difficult, you keep reminding yourself about it and eventually Something will, will happen shift, yeah. God will help that will it. make you be able to forgive. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure, yeah. My favorite quote is, forgiveness is the greatest gift you give yourself. Yeah. Now, I, the reason I'm not teaching more on this is because I, I haven't figured it out yet. I'm still holding grudges, so I don't feel right to teach something. Like, the reason I always do the work in advance of the class is so I could say, oh, we should all give tzedakah, because I made sure that day to give so much tzedakah so I could come here and stand with integrity. Because I'm still holding on to grudges, and, I, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to work through it, but I can't, I can't teach about it because I haven't, I don't have an iota of mastery here yet. But thank you for those ideas. Someone had a, yeah. What if you seek forgiveness from someone else? Yeah, absolutely. What if you seek forgiveness from someone else? 100 percent. 100 percent. Listen, this is the deepest topic in the world, and I think that actually is why everyone's kind of like in a hush, because I think it really touches all of our hearts. And by the way, forgiveness includes people that are alive and people that are not alive. Uh -huh. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, like, it's real. It's real. 
And why does chuva work? I'll tell you, it's very simple. Because once you've done chuva, you're a different person. So the decrees that were once decreed upon you, they don't apply to you anymore. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Making yeah. like spiritual stuff actually make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Did everyone get that? Yeah. Yeah. Why does chuva work? Because you're a, new you're a new person. So the old decrees that like, this one should suffer, God forbid, from a car crash, no one should, the car crash, <laughs> um, <laughs> no one should know of it. Like, oh, that's not her. So she doesn't have that decree. So chuva actually works, okay? It says that from psik Psikta, oh, I can't read my writing. Psikta Rabasi 44, the power of repentance is so great that if one merely thinks of repenting, he immediately ascends to a higher level, not the first or second firmament of the seven, but to the presence of the throne of glory. The second you think about doing tshuva, spiritually speaking, you've ascended and you're standing before God's throne of glory. That's how close, just the thought of doing tshuva. Just the thought, like Rivka was saying, of thinking, I want to forgive somebody, you're right there with God hanging out at the throne. That's powerful, no? It says, come and see, um, Tana Dve Eliyahu Rabbah says, come and see the power of repentance, for it makes men sovereign in the world. It ties a crown to his or her head. It heals illnesses and saves them from anguish and pain. And this is, I've heard this from so many Kabbalists. When you do tshuva, your physical ailments drop away. Mamash, I've seen it with myself as well. Um, and here's the thing also, we can borrow forgiveness from the future. And that's actually why I say I forgive this person everyone. Because when Mashiach comes, I'm not going to have a grudge against this person. So they say, Rabbi Nachman talks about borrowing happiness from the future. Mm. When Mashiach comes, that's it. We're not going to be mad at each other anymore. So I'm going to borrow from the future where I've already forgiven that person. I'm just going to say I forgive you. I don't feel that. I feel mm -hmm. anger and hatred, unfortunately. But I'm going to say I forgive you in my head and in my prayers. Because at some point in the future, I will. It's just not true right now. So we're, it's called borrowing from the future. Yeah, question? I love that, I love that yeah. also. I wish I remembered where I learned that. Probably my teacher, Leah. Yeah. 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 Hi. 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 She was also my student in SEM. How cool is that? <laughs> Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, it's funny because I had that card and I put it aside, so I'm glad you brought it up. Wow. Rachamim, compassion, which is everything we're praying for and what we call God on Yom Kippur. Rachamim comes from the word rechem. Rechem is, uh, rechem is a womb. It is wow. the only human organ that is designed for someone else. Wow. Sorry, guys. You're going to have to work harder on your compassion. Yeah. But that's, actually, that's actually why men grow beards because Kabbalistically, there's 13 points of compassion on a man's face. And then when you grow your beards, that it helps draw that out of a man. Oh. For a woman, that's why, that's why typically you see dudes with beards. Um, you're doing great. <laughs> you can catch up, Dad. <laughs> Um, but yeah, a rechem is the only human organ that's designed. And, and what is it? It's a place where we make space for someone else. Mm. And just to tag on that, it's also what we call God, and I also learned this from my teacher Leah, hamakom, because hamakom means the place, and God makes a place for all of us in his heart and in his world, and if we want to emulate God, we want to do that as well. Okay, so now listen like this. I got this much more to share. It's epic. It's gorgeous. I don't want anyone to, I want to respect everyone's time. So everyone is, like, I'll, just, I'll say this one more time, and then I'll get off my self-conscious train. Um, anyone can feel free to do what they want. You can even get pizza and go. You could sneak out, or you can stay. Again, for me, this time of year, if I leave, I'm going to go home and learn Torah. So I'd rather learn Torah with you. Okay, we're cool. Like, I'm just saying everyone should really feel free, okay? There's no formalities, okay? Cool? Great. Okay, now, there's another thing we all need to do, okay? And for those that were my students, I cannot believe that the, the head mistress let me do this. I got a bus for like 10 o'clock at night before Yom Kippur, and I would take all the girls from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv to go mikvah in the ocean. <laughs> mikvah, we're all supposed, every one of us, man, woman, and child, is meant to mikvah before Yom Kippur. Oh. Now, you can do this at a traditional mikvah. You can just sign up, right? You just call them. Um, or you can go to the ocean. It's really cold, but you can do it. It's really incumbent upon us to mikvah before Yom Kippur. So I don't know if you knew that, but we now know we have to call someone. We have to do one thing of tshuva. What's the other thing? Debt. 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 
and mikvah. It is incumbent upon us at some point, maybe Wednesday, to go to the mikvah. And I'll tell you the most beautiful analogy that all of Chazal talks about. By the way, I said to my mom, Mom, do you have like a lizard or a cockroach in the house? Like a fake one? And she's like, I don't know, let's go look in the art closet. And then I literally found a lizard in the art closet. Now why? It's a pez, a lizard pez. How? <laughs> lizard. No. Yeah, and I was like, that's amazing. This is like the card in the sand. I got a lizard out of the art closet. So what, why have I have a lizard in my hand? Because they say that Elul, the time of Elul and Tishrei and the holidays, it's like a spiritual mikvah, okay? The thing is, when you go to a real mikvah, tell me something. I've cleaned myself, I've brushed my hair, I've scrubbed my skin, I've taken off my drag queen makeup. <laughs> I don't look like this on weekdays. <laughs> Okay. Drum roll. Drum roll. That was funny, Ma. I almost lost my parking ticket. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So now I've cleaned myself. I'm ready for the physical mikvah, but I'm holding on to a lizard. Is a lizard a kosher animal? No. Do you think that a lizard might be considered impure? Yes. So the idea of why I wanted lizard is because what all of the sages say is they say, don't go into Yom Kippur holding a grudge because it's like going into a mikvah holding a lizard. Oh. You're going into impure. Yom Kippur to purify yourself, but you're so busy holding on to the impure, it doesn't work. And now, what are you gonna do if you're like me and you really are holding a grudge? You just keep asking Hashem for help. I, I really don't, unless a massive miracle happens, I don't think my grudge is going anywhere before Yom Kippur. It's a travesty. It's really tragic for me. I, I, I really wish this wasn't my life story, but right now it is. Never happened before, you get to experience everything, right? Like that one day I got so sick of Sneas. I was like, I hate being this close. I was like, oh my God, I never had this problem before. And now I can relate to more people. Right, so now I can relate to, really, really. I never had that problem and now I never had this problem, but I do. So the idea is that I wanna go into the mikvah with, with, without holding on to a lizard, okay? So that's, but again, but it's really fun. Make a beach party, okay? Just go with your girlfriends. You just go quick into the ocean, like hold, someone holds your bathing suit, Woo, you know. Uh, no, so for this particular mikvah, it's without a bracha. When you go and you're married, you would do it with a bracha, but for this immersion, that's just for the sake of spiritual like uh, cleanliness, just get in the water. And if you can't go to the water and you have a pool and that's your only alternative, it's also a good solution. Just make sure no one's home, you know? Okay, fine. Here we go. Now, finally, there's a few more things just for the practical, and then we'll still get into the spiritual. I think we need another like song or happiness. What can we do to interrupt? Is there a song about purity? A song about cleanliness. So fresh and so clean, clean. Ain't nobody no any. No, outcast was too long ago. Fresh and so clean, clean. Oh, yeah. All right. What did I say my sister did on the beach with 400 people? Two for one. Go to the beach, throw out your sins, get your mikvah in. Tashlich. If you didn't remember to do tashlich yet, Tashlich is the spiritual ceremony where you read all you have to, you don't need anything. You don't even need bread. That's a Baba Misa, okay? If you have bread, that's great. You don't need anything. You bring your phone, you look up text of Tashlich, go to the water, you just recite one little page. It's a very important ritual. If we had more time, I would explain it. Next. Oh, Why is not the new dance move? The chicken. I thought this was a new dance move. This was just in our... What? Right, so why? I am a vegetarian. I am extremely against animal cruelty. Why are we swinging chickens over our head? Have you guys seen this? Yeah. It's like a tradition, and I don't even know where to do it. When I lived in Jerusalem, you like walk down the street, there's chickens everywhere. Not that I did it with a chicken, but like... Why? Why are we swinging chickens over our head? And why chicken? Why not like turkey? More cumbersome? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you why. It's a very simple tradition that I learned from my friend Jessica Leah Tabak. Look at this, listen to this. Why a chicken? So simple, because back in the day, people didn't have money for food. So you'd buy a chicken, they'd use it to put your sins on it, They'd shecht it, they'd kill it so that it dies instead of you, and then they'd feed poor people with those chickens for Yom Kippur. Wow. 
ding. Like I was like, why a chicken? I called my rabbi friend. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> and then my friend Jess revealed to me we use a chicken because it was practical. It was practical Judaism. Isn't that nice? I like that. Yeah. So listen, you don't need a chicken. You need tzedakah. Here again, here's how you do it. You look up on your phone. Text or kaparot. You read one little page, you're good. Cool? Okay. okay. You give the little money. Yes, you can wave money as an alternative. Yeah. 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 And I'll let you know that Sarbale uh, Chaim, causing pain to animals, is Deoraita. It's from the Torah. So I just really highly encourage all of us to consider our animal choices. <laughs> you like that when you get the stage and then you can add in your own personal agendas? Right. Okay. Okay, more things. You guys, are we, are we good? good? Yes. Great, great. Okay, eating. Guys, when do we need to eat for Yom Kippur? Before, if you eat on Wednesday, Tuesday night and Wednesday, it's considered a mitzvah as big as fasting. Oh, wow. The mitzvah of eating on the 9th is equivalent to the mitzvah of fasting on the 10th. And if you want to get married, there's an idea that you eat and you wash for bread seven different times from Tuesday night until Wednesday. And this is a, a symbolism for the Sheva Brachot. Uh, a lot of people in Israel do this custom. I haven't, I guess... So it didn't work, you know? <laughs> uh, now, what do you do, by the way, if you can't fast on Yom Kippur? What do you do if for whatever health reason or whatever you have a condition? What do you do if you can't fast? Be in the consciousness of it. So you can be in the consciousness of it, but actually then it becomes a mitzvah for you to eat, and you should save your katamazon with great kavod. And not only that, if you can't fast, you can do a speech fast. A lot of my friends in Israel on Yom wow. Kippur, they don't speak. It's just an alternative way of, of, it's a very beautiful way of fasting. Um, sages would do it like repeatedly, so there's that. Sirdat so Mafseket is the last meal that we have right before Rosh Hashanah, um, that's not it, Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Uh, and they encourage, the sages encourage us not to drink alcohol. I can tell you from personal experience, I did that one year, I stumbled. I'm not even a drinker, that's probably why. I stumbled into Kol Nidre tipsy. It was the most shameful, oh. it was hard, I had to leave. And it's like me, I'm like obsessed. It was so shameful, so don't drink before Yom Kippur. All right, yard site candles. Oh, I brought one. I brought a yard site candle, but it's not here. Oh, oh, I brought ring pops for anyone that wants to get married this year, so just pass those out to you. Sorry, I forgot that prop. Yard site candles. Okay. You could still have one. <laughs> these these were from my Rosh Hashanah Simani, but I, you know, it's still the vibe. Okay, so here we go. I want to power through because there's so much gold left, and I and I don't want to leave anyone hanging. Yard site candles. This is the time right before Yom Kippur. Anyone that's passed or went up, it's traditional to write yard site light yard side candles. Okay. Here we go. Now I'm gonna choose the best. Okay, on the day, very simple. What are the five things we can't do just because we're doing practical and spiritual? Five things we can't do on Yom Kippur? No. No eating. Yeah, no, no wear gold is true, but that's a custom. No eating, no showering or washing, no relations. You guys know what that means, biblical style. You know someone. No leather shoes. And by the way, if you're wearing Crocs as a replacement, it's not, ab it's not advised. The idea of not wearing leather shoes is so that we wouldn't have like plush comfort on the day we're being judged for our whole lives. So, you know, just consider that. And what's the fifth one? No. White clothes. You said that. So yes. no relations, no showering, no anointing, right? So if you're into doTERRA essential oils, do not anoint yourself on this day. No leather shoes, no food and drink. Okay, great. Now, we're gonna keep going strong. How, when we get to shul, what do you arrive at shul and hear? Where's Chloe? Oh, yeah. Kol Nidre. Kol <laughs> Nidre. Right. Kol Nidre. What's Kol Nidre about? Why am I talking about all of my swearing? Kol Nidre, all the vows I took, what a weird way to start Yom Kippur. I'm going to leave you guys for a second because this is more fun. I feel like Tony Robbins. Love in basketball. No. Yeah? 
In Israel, no one says yes. So there's a movie called Love and Basketball, and when I was in high school, it was so cool, okay? And this movie is about the son of a very famous NBA basketball player, and he's sitting in his mansion, and I, I'm, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna use a curse word, so forgive me, okay? So he's sitting on the couch, and he gets frustrated with something, and he's like, I can't, okay, I won't use a curse word, I can't effing do this! And his dad says to him, son, we don't use words like that in our house. Can't is not a word that we use. <laughs> I know, right? That would not happen in my house. <laughs> the idea of Kol Nidre is the vows that we are annulling is everything we said about ourselves. I can't do that. I'm not a shacharit person. I don't have time for Torah. I'm so not like that. I can't have friends. I can't, I'm unlovable. I am unwanted. I am not good enough. All these things we swore to ourselves all year long, don't think you could enter into Yom Kippur and Kol Nidre having sworn those things about yourself. <laughs> we start off Yom Kippur, we enter into Shul, we said, Hashem, however I limited myself this year, I'm so sorry. Please revoke it because I have to know. If I don't know that I can do anything, then, 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 then there's no reason I'm in Shul. We go to shul because we have hope for ourselves. So before we start anything, call me Dre, all the vows that I made, first and foremost about myself, I'm annulling them. Yeah? Can you do that with forgiveness then? Did you say, I can't forgive? I can't forgive. Yeah, 100%. Nice. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That was a radical, awesome answer that would be helpful for me. Because I've been saying that. I just can't. Thank you. What did he say? He said, can you do that about forgiveness? Because I was saying, I just can't forgive, I just can't. But he's saying, we'll also do it about forgiveness. So, wow, that's how we start with Kol Nidre. And you know, my teacher Leah says, on Yom Kippur, my very existence is being called into question, and more than will I live or die is, ready for this one? I always really wanted to be a preacher. <laughs> and my sister got the title reverend. Take that. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do the thing I came here for? Wow. On Yom Kippur, you have to beg Hashem, please make it clear what my mission in this world is. Amen. Yeah. What am I doing here? That's the real question on Yom Kippur. After you realize that you take away all the vows you made against yourself, you have to beg Hashem, more than will I live or die? Did I do the thing? Am I doing the thing I came into this world to do? And I want to tell you what we were created from because this is epic. I'm just going to do the walk thing because it's really yeah, fun. <laughs> Should I turn this? Yeah. Okay. They can see us. They can see you, huh? Is everybody okay with being filmed? I, I did this last time. I forgot to ask permission. Yeah. Blur our faces Am I going to blur your faces? I did not give consent. <laughs> you did not give consent? <laughs> <laughs> Single, ready to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> That was fine, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so here we are in the Garden of Eden. You look lovely, Adam. So Adam, God has not yet made Adam, but he has to. And it says, and I think I just gave this over in a recent share, so if I told you it, please forgive me or take it as review. Okay? It says that God took dirt from somewhere on the earth, and he dug up this dirt, he took it, and he brought it over to the Garden of Eden, and then he started to fashion Adam. Oh, look, let's do you a little nose. Let's fashion you out of this dirt. But the question is, where did this dirt come from? Huh. And why did God need to take it from somewhere else? Is this weird? Dirt, Taurus? The dirt was taken from the future site of what's called the Mizbeach. The Mizbeach is where we brought our offerings to ask forgiveness to God in the temple. So what does this mean, says my teacher, Moralea Golem? We are created from the place of our tshuva. Yes, we all have great qualities. He's very, very funny. But you know what? In heaven, they don't care because that was a free gift. But if I have struggle with anger and I did tshuva on that, that's the place where I become myself. That's the place from which I'm created. Does that make sense? Yes. Hi, Amelia. Hi, Justine. Hi, Justine. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's not for Saudi Arabia. She's like, oh gosh, get me out of here. I'll go to this side. 
Does that make sense? You hear why that's so beautiful? Because we could think, oh, I'll just get away with this. I don't need to do tshuva. Like, oh, I'll just separate. The but then you're not. Then you. Then did you come here for the thing you were made to be here for? We are. Tell me, can anyone volunteer a quality that you had to work really, really hard for, but now you own it and it's a part of you? Yes. What's that? My voice. Tell us. Wow. Woo. Um, I was fright. I was scared as hell. Really? As a child for many years. <gasps> I didn't start singing in public until I was 20. Really? Until I got to college. Very and, afraid of it. And now? Like, I'm so happy. I'm we are so made happy. from the place of our tshuva. Chloe is Chloe with this most publicly angelic voice because literally we're made from the place. We're made. Our dirt, where Adam is made from, is the future site of repentance. Guys, am I bringing you the most golden Torahs in the world? Yes. yes. I am. I am. Yes, you are. I mean, it's not about me. I just feel so lucky that I've been able to collect all these ideas. It's just so amazing. Okay, so uh, let's just check where we're going with here. Da, 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 da. Okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. We're doing good. Uh, I'm going to go for like 15 more minutes. I see some yawning. No. Does anyone want chocolate? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now, you're in the service. You've already coldly drained away. Now it's, it's, it's officially Thursday. You're sitting in shul, and nothing in the sidur makes sense. Right? And why am I talking so much about so many weird things? We're going to talk about the Kohen Gadol and his service. We're going to talk about the service of goats. I kick a goat off a cliff. Huh? See, I, I did not do Krav Maga with my dad. <laughs> right? I mean, it's really, really weird. And then we're going to talk about Jonah and the whale. And my dad said to me last year, you know what you should say before you talk about Jonah? You should tell them it was a whale of a tail. <laughs> That's funny, right? So guys, this is weird, right? Kohanim, goats, and whales. Welcome to the holiest day of the year. Minus four. It's interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a one minute, I'm going to do a three minute on the Kohen. We're going to skip the goats. If we want to learn more about that later, I'll chill and we can do that. And we're going to learn a bit about uh, the whale. Okay, this is the most epic thing I think I've ever read about Yom Kippur. Because it is from the Book of Our Heritage. Okay, I really recommend this book. Check this out. I I'm just going to read it to you. Story time! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn the thing around again because I think that it was more enjoyable like that. Can I get some technical help? Is that good? All right, here we go. Here we go, friends. Let's Whoops, gonna fall. All right, here we go. So, it just so happens that towards the end of the period of the second temple, a man named Marcus! Marcus! A man that's amazing! <laughs> Um, a man named Marcus, a delegate of the Roman Empire who resided in Jerusalem, sent the following report of his experience in watching the Kohen Gadol enter and leave the sanctuary. Okay? So we're in the second temple period. There's a guy named Marcus. Is anyone here named Marcus? Anyone have a husband named Marcus? <laughs> now, I, I want to lend this to you guys to take pictures afterwards because you're not going to believe what you hear. This is a, a first, how do you call first hand witness? Live? How do you call this? Live witness. Live witness. Li eyewitness. 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 <laughs> <laughs> English. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I, I, because I'm like three hours over time, I'm going to cut it short, but this part is the highlight. Okay. So they talk about how the Kohen Gadol, like everybody is, Kohen Gadol is the high priest, by the way. And they're, everybody in like this the town is like joining him and like they're learning Torah all night long and they're keeping him awake and everyone has candles lit all over Jerusalem. And then it says, okay. They assembled, the assembled then announced that the Kohen Gadol is about to depart from his home to the chamber in the sanctuary, okay? Imagine going to your rabbi's house and waiting at his home, you're like, rabbi, 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 rabbi. <laughs> this is what we did in the time of the second temple period. We went to the Kohen Gadol's house, all of us, and we were cheering him on. So, okay, whereupon all the people came out to accompany him, and this is what I saw, okay, I witnessed. First, there were all those whose lineage was traceable to the kings of Israel. They were followed by the descendants of the house of David. They were followed by the Levites with the proclamation, Give honor to the house of Levi. There were 36,000 Levim wearing blue silk. Wow. They were followed.
followed by the Kohanim wearing white silk, 24,000 in number. They were followed by the singers and the musicians, or thousands and thousands. In fact, they say at any given moment in the temple, there were approximately 5,000 instruments and 30 to 40,000 singers. Wow. wow. Followed by the trumpeters, the gatekeepers, the incense makers, those who wove curtains, the guards. They were followed by the 70 members of the Sanhedrin. And I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but it's unbelievable. And all this transpired, when, and they were all weeping with awe. All of them, all like 100,000, were weeping from bliss and awe at the magnitude of the day. And it says, ooh, where am I going to find it? It says, basically without reading it, it says that the, the, the escort out was like 10 times as magnificent and that all of Jerusalem was shining with these candles they had lit and people just walking in robes. This was Yom Kippur. Now we've lost this, but at least tonight we're doing our best to make a close effort. Okay, a few more Torahs. Going back, Dad, be my technical assistant. Thank you. Guys, is that incredible? Do you ever the parade for the Kohen in Jerusalem? No. It's amazing. Okay, we're skipping that and Whale of a tail. All right, we're going to end on Yonah because I actually wrote a rap and I really want to rap it for you. <laughs> I did. But before that, I want to just share with you, just look, look, guys, look how good we're doing. That's all that's left. All right. Oh, wow. You, so, okay, you do all these weird services that if we have more time, we'll learn more Torah. But if not, at the end of Yom Kippur, you get to what service? What's it called? Neilah. Much Neilah. like my name. Yes. Neila. Neila comes from the Hebrew word? Lock. Yeah, na'ul means locked. So what all the scary rabbis say is, beware, the gates of repentance are closing. The gates are going to be locked. And you know what Rav Soma says? Yes, they're locked. They're locked with you on the inside. This is the time of greatest intimacy between you and God. And I'll tell you why. We don't just wear white on Yom Kippur because we're angelic and this and that. Yom Kippur is our wedding with God. Oh. Rosh Yalul is the romance. Anila Dodiva Dodili. Rosh Hashanah, we choose our God. We crown the king. We say, I want you to be my boo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're looking good. you my king. That's what we say on Rosh Hashanah. It's the engagement period. <laughs> and Yom Kippur is the wedding. How is, what is a wedding characterized by Judaism? In Judaism, you actually need very little for the wedding. What's the main thing you actually need? Wow. The yichud room. Oh, wow. room. It's not a wedding if the couple is not alone in public view. Like, I mean, like, everybody mm -hmm. knows they're alone. Unless we have the yichud room, that place where the couple goes and they lock the door and they say, it's just us now. It's not actually a kosher wedding. Wow. Okay, oh my god, I'm gonna like check halacha before you count me as truth on that. <laughs> but, but like pretty much, yeah? And on Yom Kippur, we wear white. Again, what do you do on your wedding day? You fast. And we make a commitment to God. We recommit ourselves. And by the way, Sukkot then becomes Sheva Brachot. Wow. It's a process. It's a process. So when we show up and it's that last moment and you're feeling trepidation, is that the word? Trepidation? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it. And the gates are closing. Yes, they're closing, but they're closing with you inside for you and God to have the greatest intimacy. So let's say all of Yom Kippur sucks for you and it's so yeah. boring and you had no kavana and no intention. In those last moments of Yom Kippur, just go in to yourself with God and just tell him everything from your heart. Just tell him whatever you need to say. It's intimacy. It's like your best friend and lover. So that's very, very special. Um, okay, so... So nice, mm -hmm. so nice. So that, that's, that's really the point of all of this, right? We, we do all this prep, it's like a wedding. Who here has been married and it was like so much prep? <laughs> and it was so much preparation. You're getting married next month, mazel tov. <laughs> Somebody get them a ring pop. <laughs> wow, we have a chatan and kala. So it's, and it's so much work, right? Like, they, you don't become Bridezilla for nothing. You become Bridezilla because it is so much work. Do you remember? And the decorations and the planning, it like drives you crazy. That's where we are right now. It drives us crazy. We have so much prep, so much work to do. But then you get to that night, and it's just you guys alone, and that's the whole point of everything. That's it. All the guests, they're just there for you. And that's what Yom Kippur is. Where's the honeymoon? 
So, <laughs> so Sukkot, exactly, that's the Sheva Brachot, seven nights of just partying. Oh. Sukkot, you're not really, you don't need to get so serious or have so many, pr you're just meant to be happy. Mm -hmm. That's the honeymoon, Sukkot. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah, lovely. yeah. So, but, okay. Uh, okay, so wow, this is a different Seder than I anticipated. I, I invite everyone to just close their eyes for a second. Because we started by letting everybody know that they're so important and that this is really a romantic affair between us and God, but we have to know we're worthy of it. And many of us have seen this list before, but I found it really powerful. Usually on Yom Kippur we say, Asham, new, Bagad, new, Gazal, new, I've messed up, I've sinned, I'm ashamed of myself, I stole, I spoke slander. Here's a different rendition. Ahav, new, I have loved. Barach, new, we have blessed. Gadal, new, we have grown. Dibar, new, Yofi. I have spoken positively. He'elinu, I have raised up. Vechasnu, I have shown compassion. Zaraznu, we have acted enthusiastically. Chamalnu, we have been empathetic. Tafach, tafachnu emet, we have cultivated truth. Yatsanu tov, we have given good advice. Kavadnu, we have respected, and if I'm saying any of the Hebrews wrong, I'm sorry, I just lived there for 14 years, I still didn't get it. <laughs> Lamanu, we have learned. Machalnu, we have forgiven. Nachamnu, we have been com we have comforted. Salalnu, we have been created. Orararnu, we have stirred. Paalnu, we have been spiritual activists. Tzidkenu, we have been just. Kivinu laaretz, we have longed for the land. Rachamnu, we have been merciful. Shakadnu, we have given effort. Tamachnu, we have supported. Taramnu, we have contributed. Takanu, we have repaired. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So before we end, I will give you a treat because I was really trying to be a rap artist, and then I went Torah. <laughs> it's true, I have a hip-hop album recorded in Ghana. <laughs> it went number one on the radio ish. <laughs> true story. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was singing Amazing Grace on campus, and this guy caught me, he's like, yo, you want to rap with me? I'm like, whatever, and it's that we did. <laughs> um, so I, so I want to show you the rap that I wrote about Yona, but the, we read Yona as the Haftorah, Oh, thank you, Anna. That was really good timing. Uh, Anna's on DJ. So, uh, hold on. Centered myself. What was I talking about? Oh, Yona. We read Yona as a Haftorah. Okay. Oh, I have papers. Hold on. I have like 26. So good luck. These are the lyrics. It's just handwritten. Um, but if anyone's interested in the lyrics, the the, the 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 main part of the message of Yona is Yona, the prophet, was trying to run away. Uh, from his mission on earth, but what we realize here tonight is that we're here to show up. We're here to show up for ourselves. We're here to show up for God. We're here to stop running away from the hard stuff and say the hard thing and make the hard call and do it because where we do our tshuva is where we're created. The place from which we do tshuva is the place from where we become ourselves truly. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to wrap this up with a quick review and then I'm going to do my rap and we can party all night long. All right, guys, here's what we learned today. Vanna White, thank you for all your notes. We're almost referring to it. We have 43 hours to go. All right, guys, here's what we learned tonight, okay? Are you ready? Ready. Ready. What's this week's Parsha? <laughs> yeah, we mentioned that only at the beginning. Okay, I would give you a high five. What is it? Yes, high five. Woo! Okay. What is the Parsha? Ha'azinu. Uh, maybe we'll have another class on Thursday night. Just kidding. Okay, here we go. We learn today, and if I don't mention anything, please, oh no, we're doing an exercise after the wrap, guys, whoever wants to stay, it will be the, mo we're doing the exercise we did with the teachers, everyone should stay for that, right? Guys, this will change your life if you stay, we're just going to keep you here all night, okay, <laughs> um, okay, what do we have to do in the next 48 hours? <laughs> we have to mikvah, what else? Pay our debts, what else? Make the call, do tshuva, that's right, okay. Uh, which is, what's your, what's your greatest tshuva work? Whatever is? Hardest. Hardest, hardest, hardest for, you. for you. You guys are amazing students. Why does tshuva work? Because he changed you. You're a new person. Okay. Um, uh, why, why do we not go with the lizard? Impure. 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 So going into the mikvah of Yom Kippur, holding on to a grudge. grudge. And what do we do when we don't know what to do about a grudge? Ask we want to show you them. Help me. Okay. We talked about making sure that you do. Tashleaf. 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 And that while you're there, you can. Super. Right. Well. <laughs> and make sure to swing a chicken. And on Tuesday night and Wednesday, should you be on a diet? No. No. What should you do? Yes. And what if you want to get married? Wash them. 
Wow, seven times. Okay, amazing. And what are we going to light for our ancestors right before Yom Kippur? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. candles. Very good. And we are not going to have relations, nor shower, nor not have leather shoes. And what do we learn from love and basketball? That we enter into Colney Dre. And really, what am I saying? Yeah. I can't effing do this. Yeah. What am I really saying? I can't. I can't. I can't. Yeah, Colney Dre. Yeah, we got to do the thing we're here for. We're created from where? The dust of the? The Mizbeach, the altar, the place from which we did tshuva. Did that make sense? Did I lose yeah. people on that? Okay, cool. And we learned from Gabby that actually what we talk about is that God is a God of Rachamim because Rachamim is the root of the word, which is which is the only organ that's there designed for someone else. We learned about the parade of the Kohen Gadol. We did not learn about the goats, but it's amazing and it explains. Whoa. Maybe later. Uh, we learned about Neila being locked in with God. We learned about the process of the Chagim being romance, marriage, Sheva Brachot. Um, oh, and one of the other deepest things, why at the end of, ne of ne Neila, when it says in the Sidur, you're forgiven, you're forgiven, what's the next thing we do? That's true. We do something before it. We ask forgiveness again. Why? God just forgave us. Yeah. You remember? for not really believing that God forgave us. Really? We ask one more to God says, you're forgiven, you're forgiven, you're forgiven. And then we say, please forgive me because we didn't truly believe in our hearts that we're forgiven or we didn't truly forgive ourselves. Mm. And that's where it starts. And that's where it ends. Okay, so, uh, eh. all right, we're gonna do a fun Yona and an exercise. Did I miss anything that we learned tonight? Do you feel more prepared for Yom Kippur? Yes. yes. Yep. Do you want to hear my Yona rap and then do the most incredible exercise that will change your life? Yeah. Okay, yeah. hit it. Everyone have the lyrics? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you guys knew that I was gangsta, but now you do. Can we can we bump this? What's up? Is the speaker is the speaker is, what? Yeah. After I'm done, get up. Yeah. Brando, you're not gonna believe what a gangsta I am. I'm ready to see. <laughs> Jewish star? <laughs> no, it's okay. We, everyone's been so patient. It's like already two hours and people are still sitting. I'm trying to go for it. We're trying to get the music. Oh. Suspense. I know I have to make it that good at this point. Yeah, we found it? Hit it. Na 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 Is on mute? You want me to help? I can't help. I'm really impressed by the people that have young children at home and are still here. I I really I appreciate it deeply. And what about what? What about dogs? And anyone with gray hair, this is past your bedtime. Yes. Yeah? We have another speaker. We could... Can I have the track? Is the device on? I don't know. Do we have a second speaker? You knew this was going to be clutch. Hook us up. Do you want to pair it to Anna? Sure. Guys, and I'm telling you, the exercise, you'll be so grateful for these last two hours just for the exercise we're going to do. You will not believe it. It's so beautiful. I'm not exaggerating. You got it? Do you need a speaker? Oh, your phone, great. Can you hook this? Can you Bluetooth this to your phone? Yes. To YouTube? I forgot to record. Shh. Thank you, Hashem. I forgot to hit the record button, the voice record. Sorry. For the whole thing? Yeah. That's okay. Can we get it louder? Five, seven, eight, two, Yom Kippur. So what to what to what lies of only how much you could do without God's presence when he knew he can. Truth about hearing the inner voice, but not stepping up to be a man. Nights enveloped in the fish's belly, days head in hands. Realized his ways from the depths, he prayed a holy demon. Hold on, here we go. Here's the chorus. You can sing it with me if you want. 
You can't be dishonest with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Can't run away from the mission that he gave to you. Scary as it may be, oh baby, I want out. I will run to Nineveh and I will shout. Repent from your ways. I know it sounds crazy, but God has decreed it's gonna go down in days. I said it down, to down, to down, down, down. Okay, here we go. Oh, watch what you're putting on your daily dish Or you might end up like Jonah in the fish I said, oh, watch what you're putting on your daily dish Or you might end up like Jonah in the fish Do you want to listen? Do you want to rebel? Help me, Lord, because I don't want no It's capsized the size of time to own up love Because the cause and effect, they be coming from above Here's the chorus, you ready? Here we go Can we get this any louder? Maybe? You can't be dishonest with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Can't run away from the mission that he gave to you. Scary as it may be, oh baby, I want out. I will run to Nineveh and I will shout. Repent from your ways. I know it sounds crazy, but God has decreed it's gonna go down in days. I said it down to down to down to down to down to down. Yay! Okay. idea is oh I told you I'm gangsta <laughs> and humble and oh so humble <laughs> okay here's the exercise if you stayed this long don't run away guys try this at home um, Lee if you're with your kids please do this at home okay so everyone has to get up okay and what you're gonna do is like this I need okay I need everybody to form two lines everybody needs a partner preferably either your actual Okay, is everybody opposite? Is everybody opposite somebody? Okay, check this out. It's really cool. Okay, see what's happening here? This is amazing. Okay, um, Anna, can you please, can I please cue another, can you just film stuff for a sec? Yes. Um, I want to cue a different music. Okay. Um, uh, Indian flute meditation music. So, ladies and gentlemen, is everybody standing opposite their partner? Does everyone have a partner? Is anyone missing a partner? Awesome. Okay. My invitation, this is going to take five minutes. This is one of the most profound exercises I've ever done. Uh, I learned it from uh, Yom Tov Glazer. And, uh, and every time I do this with my students, it's the most profound thing they did all year. What we're doing is we're going to now, Rabbi Nachman says, you turn your Torah into a tefillah. Hashem, help us practice the teachings. The one teaching that's the most important tonight, as we learned, is forgiveness and compassion. Yes. What we're going to do is a silent exercise where you're going to, the most uncomfortable you ever were, stare into the eyes of the person in front of you. Yes, 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 you remember. And not only are we going to do this, but we're going to do this in silence. So in five seconds, get, get everything you need to say out. And if you don't know the person, it's even better, okay? Okay, I'll take it out. Thank you. All right. Q. So all you're going to do, for, okay, and five, four, three, two. Now your job, your job is to be completely silent and to stare into the eyes of the person in front of you. Now this is awkward, but I tell you, if you look away, it's only because you're dealing with your own vulnerabilities and it's not kind because the person in front of you deserves your eye attention. And I'm just going to lead you through this, okay? You ready? Here we go. Anna, kick it. All right, so are you ready? So get it. So guess just get into the zone. Some people cry, some people laugh. It's all okay, but whatever you do, keep keep bringing your eyes stare back. Okay, we're gonna go into silence. It takes a while. Ready for silence? Are we ready for silence? Aries, ready for silence? Shoshani, and stop making Aries talk. You're on camera. Okay, everyone silent. Okay, we're good. We're done with our words. You absolutely need to be silent for this. No mouthing things. Chatan and Kala, you're really cute, but you're also on Facebook. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, are we ready? Okay, here we go. 
the person in front of you had a really hard year. The person in front of you is fighting battles that they are so ashamed to talk about. The person in front of you did amazing things this year. They helped people. They were a good friend. They also felt completely insecure. The person in front of you had a health issue this year that they were too embarrassed to talk about. The person in front of you this year felt ugly and overweight. The person in front of you had so much courage. The person in front of you had at least one night where they cried into their pillow and felt completely alone and lonely. The person in front of you dealt with family issues this year. The person in front of you dealt with income issues this year. The person in front of you had their heart broken or maybe they got to experience love. The person in front of you has put up incredible strength on the day to day just to show up. The person in front of you is trying their hardest and the person in front of you failed epically and was a horrible, cruel, epic, abusive human. The person in front of you treated people they love terribly and the person in front of you treated people they love in ways that saved their lives. The person in front of you wants to love themselves more and wants to feel more secure, but it's hard. The person in front of you doesn't know if there's hope for them. And the person in front of you has hope beyond what you could ever imagine. The person in front of you is every person on the street, is every person in your house, is every person in shul, and it's you. I invite you to look deeply into the eyes of the other person And without saying a word, I want you to bless them with whatever it is you are so badly wanting that you can't even announce. I want you to, through your eyes, send them energy of healing, of positive relationships, of shalom bayit, of beautiful sexuality and touch, of intimacy and care, of feeling wanted, of feeling loved, of feeling good enough. The person in front of you lost somebody this year and the person in front of you is afraid to lose somebody this year. We are so human. Hashem knows this. When do we get to know this? So that's tonight. And I'm blessing us all as you look into the eyes of the person in front of you to continue to walk through life with these eyes of compassion for yourself and for everybody because we're all going through the same stuff. So I invite you to close your eyes now and continue to bless the person in front of you. We're gonna stay closed eyes for about 30 seconds. When you open your eyes, I invite you to do whatever feels right according to COVID. Maybe it's to give the biggest hug ever. Maybe it's just to stand there. Maybe it's to give an elbow bump. You can open your eyes. And at this point in three deep breaths, You can relate to the person in front of you in a way you never did. Three, two, one.